Hi, I'm Janet. After years of trying to figure out the film industry, making some gains, only to see them dwindling away, I finally got my shit together and I made $85,000 my first year in the film industry in Los Angeles. Creating a career in film does not need to be a struggle. You can start in your city. I want to teach you my process and teach you how to do it. You'll see that you really can live that extraordinary film lifestyle that only the film industry can provide. Let's go. I wanted to talk to you guys about, uh, well, and I got an email. Sometimes people join my program, the A-list program, and one of the most important things that I do is I have them see the attitude that they're bringing into the future that they want to create in the film industry. For the first time, they're able to see how they have been thinking about themselves and the possibility of creating this career in the, in the film industry. And sometimes people join my program because they're like, okay, I just need to change, I need to ch like change my circumstance and just do it. Do what, she, do what she says. But then what gets in the way is their own brain. They're like, yeah, but, um, you know, I've just been looking for some jobs on Craigslist. One of the first things I teach you guys to do is I teach you guys to get these similar to set jobs. And these are jobs that have you doing tasks that are similar to film sets. And they're also jobs that are super easy to get. That So you make money, at least $200 a day. And they're also high paying jobs. So they're similar to set. They're beautiful in all ways. They're high paying. They have you doing tasks. They get your, you're given responsibility. And you can take those tasks and put it straight on your resume when you know how to use those jobs. Like the program shows you how to use those tasks to put them on your resume. So... Um, Oh, can I add to that really quick? Oh, yeah, sure. It's also, they also really help you transition into a freelance world, into the freelance industry. Like if you're working um, like a, a job where somebody else makes your own schedule, the film industry doesn't work that way. You make your own schedule in the film industry, at least the way that we teach. Yeah. So when, you, when we do these similar to set jobs, it helps you slowly transition from what your nine to five life into a freelance life where you can make your own schedule however you want. Yeah, it, see, it, uh, and, and that also feeds into the way that you're thinking about yourself and your value for whatever it is that you want to do, you know? One of the things that I think is so great about the similar set freelance jobs is like, okay, let's go halfway there. Like, maybe it's not a film set that you're on consistently, but let's go halfway there and do the get the easiest freaking jobs that get you into that pattern and mindset and knowing that, hey... I'm really good. I mean, I can be given responsibility. I can, I can nail that thing. And if I can do that, then I can just do the same thing on a film set. Yay. All right. So I get, I get, I get an email this morning from, from somebody that's like, I've been looking on Craigslist and I can't find anything. And I've been doing the magic list, which is where I, sh I show you how to find all the producers and production managers and set dressers and assistant directors and everybody in your whole area. Just like, and there aren't any. And I know... So I'm like, okay, let me see. I saw where they're from. I looked in that area. I did my, I did my own training. And I'm like, oh, okay. Right there, there's set dressers, there's production companies, there's, production, there's producers, there are people. And two and a half hours away, oh my God, it's a major freaking market. So we're getting all disappointed and bummed out. And they, they have my program. Boom, it's right there. It's right there. But what's going to stop somebody... It's going to be there. What's happening? Just their own brain. It's just like, oh my God, there's nothing happening. Now, here's the thing. We get in patterns. It's not their fault. It's, it's, they're, they're, it's, all this is, is this is a human being. You can totally relate because, and I can too, because there are times that I'm up, times that I'm just like, nothing I do works. Especially in the past when I did not notice how to look at my own thinking. I mean, you just think that you're in it and it sucks and everybody else is going to be successful, but I'm not. And all that is, is all that is, is a pattern of thinking. And it just seems very true because when you start being disappointed about life and that things are not working, then you're doing things through that lens. You're like you're applying for jobs thinking it's not going to work. You're not really like doing your magic list, finding all of these production companies and being excited about it because you're like, oh, it's not going to work anyway. 
and you're disappointed and then you go to jobs, you might like, it might be a good opportunity and you show up and you're like, well, it's probably not going to work. Nothing works. Um, and just having this disappointed, defeated energy. And in today's world, that doesn't work. In today's world, just like in any world, but in today's world especially, people want people that are high energy, that are problem solvers. The world, you will make so much money if you are high energy, problem solving. If you can see, hey, this defeated, this disappointed person in me, that's part of me. Yes, yes, it's part of me. But there's also another part of me that is excited, that knows I can do it, that wants to learn these skills, that wants to grow. So that part of me, I want to really start listening to a lot more than the defeated part of me. It's just patterns. It's just a trance. We, our brains get caught in a, in a trance, and we're used to looking at life through this lens. That's all that is. And it really feels like that's you because you're like, everything's so disappointing. That's just, ugh, I just have such a hard time. I'm so depressed all the time. It's just you got in a pattern. It's not you. And it feels like home now. It feels like, ah, yes. And if I'm disappointed about, about life and there's nothing happening around me, it's not my fault. I can just keep staying disappointed. Even though it's not the life I wanted, I'm very familiar with it. So therefore, I'm not going to get hurt too much because I'm disappointed. I'm very familiar with it. I'm not going to fail. I'm not going to get hurt too much. I already know. I, you know and I don't want to fail because I can't get any lower than I am. Let me just tell you this. If you are thinking that, and your brain kind of does that sometimes, maybe, you're already failing. So if you're like, I don't want to fail, you're already failing. You already don't have the life you want. You're already disappointed with your life. Okay, you already are in the worst place that that can be. The only place from now is up. The only place left is up. There's another way to think about this too, where imagine your brain, your mind, is like a tool that you practice over and over again. So if you have spent so many years practicing with negative emotions, practicing with this like, oh, like I can't do it, or like, how am I gonna make this happen? That's the tool that you're practicing with. And that's what is familiar, that is what is comfortable, and that's what um, you're shaping your reality with. So what we're talking about is realizing that same mind, you can also use this tool in a new way where you're happy and positive and you're actually building a solid foundation for your future. And that's, even though it's the same tool, it's you're using it in a different way and it's gonna take practice. It's gonna be awkward at first. It's gonna be weird. It's gonna feel like maybe like the imposter syndrome or whatever. Think of the mind shift that's gonna, that, that must occur. Like, okay, disappointed, take, going through the motions, feeling disappointed. It's gonna be feeling really weird to be like, okay, now, I'm gonna actually start to feel like, hey, this is gonna work for me. Now, when, when I did that in the past, like, oh, this is gonna work, and it didn't work right away, then I was disappointed again. I went back and said, see, didn't work. So, so what, you want it, what you need to do is you need to be like, no, 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 no. I'm not gonna go back and prove to myself that I'm disappointed again. Now I am deciding that I'm really gonna stick with that I'm going to feel hopeful. I'm gonna feel excited. I'm going to decide this is going to work. I know this is going to move me forward. I'm doing this for growth. And that last one I just gave you, I'm doing this for growth. Perfect. It's perfect place to think because then it's no like fail, succeed. It's more like, no, no, no. It doesn't really matter. Everything I'm doing is for me and I'm doing it for growth anyway. So, I, when I approach the looking on Craigslist, when I do the things that I'm teaching people to do, which that's just like one little tiny, like that's a tiniest part of the whole thing. But it's the part that this person offered up to me. I've been looking at Craigslist. I'm like, well, that's an absolute bare minimum. What's all the other things I've been teaching you guys to do? <laughs> and do you expect it's going to work? Are you like high energy expecting like, oh my God, these people are going to hire me. All this is going to work for me. And if you're not, just notice that, that's all. And then just decide like, okay, do I wanna live in that place? Or do I wanna access this other place? And if it's for growth, then it's like, oh, okay. 
I'm going to do what Janice says here, even though that, that seems scary to me. I'm going to do what Janice says here. I'm going to do what Janice says here. But, and I'm doing this for growth. I'm doing this for learning and growing. I, I don't even know who I'm going to turn out to be, but it's going to be something. It's going to make me money. It is money. What I teach you guys to do, it is money. I mean, that's what attracts money. Look at where we're at. We're in a multi-million dollar house. I mean, this is thinking that gives you money. I don't need to tell you that, but I think that you already know that growing every day and using every day to grow and take on this way of thinking, you know that this is going to make you money. I mean, like, like, look at how much money you've been making. Like, it went like this. Yeah. Since you... Since we since I started the program. Since, yeah. Um, and, well, yeah. yeah, since you've been um, with me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just got booked on a set dressing job for four fifty a day, which is like pretty awesome. The most I made in art department so far. And they hired you on one day, and then they hired you the next day. Right. They didn't have to. <laughs> yeah, I, like I, I walked on set. Having the, we call it get it factor in, in the Friends and Film program where you have, you have high energy, you have confidence, and just the way you move, people feel good about you being on their team. It's like, oh, this person gets it. And so anyways, I'm on set. I have never, I've only met one person, my one connection that got me hired, but besides that, I knew no one. Mm -hmm. And a couple hours into the job, um, someone else who I was working with, they're like, oh, bro, like, you, I want you on my team. Like, we got this thing coming up next week. I'm, I'm, like, give me your number. I, you're, I can tell you're one of the good ones. Just, like, straight up like that. One of the good and ones. So, yeah, one of the, that's the, that's, the that's my I term. Said. I'm like, it's, I, you hear it on set. It's like, one of the good ones. Mm -hmm. It real. it's a thing. Um, congratulations, and, by the way. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, I couldn't have done it without you. Or it would have taken me, like, 10 years to get to here. Like, what mm -hmm. I've done, what we've done in, like, two years. Well, he's not showing up going, like, oh, I don't know if anybody's going to like me here on set. Or, oh, you know, man, probably not going to get ass back or I'm scared. You know, he's managing his mind thinking, hey, I'm here. It's my home. All these great people. What do we get to do today? Yeah. What do I get to get my hands <laughs> on today? I mean, and, yeah. there's no part of his brain that's filled with like, you know, what if this doesn't work? What if I get fired today? What if I, that's that, it's not taking up any space in his brain. I'm also thinking like, Everyone here is my friend, or like everyone here mm. is cool, and you know every, we're all here to get the job done together. And everyone wants mm. like to do it in a in a fun way, or like an easy way, or you know the the most enjoyable way, because we're gonna be spending like twelve hours together, so we're gonna make the most of it. So that's that's the internal dialogue that's happening, and also like yeah. like wanting to do a good job, and also being willing to learn the things that I don't know, and then that's what that's. That's what is attractive to people. That's what we like. You have a great, delightful attitude. Free in his mind as he's there, um, creating... Oh, we got Aaron just showed up. <laughs> uh, creating great work on set. I mean, it's like everybody's there to get that day done with people that they all enjoy working with. And we want to get it done efficiently. We don't want to make it hard. We want to do it safe. We want to do it right. We want, it, we want that director to work again. We want to work again, but we're really also focused on everybody else. You want to make Jake look good, production designer, the head of the frickin' art department, you know, or, you know, maybe, what was the art director? He was art directing, yeah. Oh, art director. Oh, my God, that is such a high position. I'm so proud of him. He's, that's another person that when he started Friends and Film, he was working in, at a call center. Now, he knew that he was capable of so much more. And so that brings us right back to this point. He was working at a call center. He had tried to make it as an actor in New York City. He was back in Maine living with his dad working at a call center. And one thing that he kept thinking was, I am going to use this program to become successful in the film industry. I'm going to do what she says, and it is going to work. That's very important. He wasn't thinking, whatever I do doesn't work. I'm so disappointed. You can't do shit. Thinking, I'm just disappointed. Everything's not working. I don't know. There's nobody or Nothing's happening. <laughs> you won't look for, you won't find, you won't look for all the opportunities that are flying right by you. You won't even see them. And nobody's going to be attracted to you. So, and if you're in that disappointed place, you might be like, tell me about it. That's exactly where I'm at. And now you're making me feel even worse. That's because, again, you're looking at it through the lens of being disappointed. Instead, be like, okay, that's like exactly where I'm at. 
And now I don't need to see things through that anymore. I know that very well. I, I have known that part of me very, very well, and it doesn't serve me. And I'm going to now bring up that another part of me which sees possibility, that believes that it's going to work, that has my own back and starts to talk nicely to myself. You can do this. You can meet these people. Things are going to work. This is all about growth. I'm going to have an amazing life because I'm going to create my amazing life. I can get any job I want. Maybe I don't get the first one. Maybe I get the 10th try. But the process of getting those, going for the jobs, no matter what job it is, is very good for me. It's very important to me. Can I add on? Can I, so something like very practical that you can do every day to start developing and cultivating this mindset that we're talking about is when you wake up in the morning, just practice being grateful for something like I, I literally spend my first the first five minutes of my day um thinking about the things I'm grateful for and just making that so like scientifically the first 15 minutes of when we wake up where our brain is very programmable we're in our our brains are just very um receptive so instead of reaching for my phone which is like a uh, it's impulsive it's something else that I've practiced that I'm breaking I'm switching that and practicing being grateful for stuff and so that is just one of the ways that we start to train our mind tool in a new way and it's easy just five minutes a day like it's, it's easy to do but the other thing is like things that are easy to do are easy not to do hmm. so it's just you have to be intentional with it like if you really want to put yourself on a trajectory to like if you're if you're going here and you don't want to go here, you actually want to go here, then you have to like make like that five minute a day shift that will make a difference. Like a, another analogy is mm -hmm. imagine just like the power of of water dripping over and over again on one piece of rock. Like over 10 years, that one drop a day on the rock is going to make a hole or, you know, over. So those five minutes a day practicing being grateful and breaking out of the negative mind state and stepping into a positive one, those are drips of water that is very powerful, that put you in a new, in a new life that you actually want to live instead of feeling like, oh, nothing's happening for me. Oh, now, so in, good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. those are great analogies. And just so that they can know that how you were feeling, you know, um, it, when you were not when you, you know, how were you feeling? Yeah, I mean, how I used, low were you feeling? Like, I, I hated myself. I was depressed. I um, just didn't want to, I just didn't want to, like, live life anymore. And that was what I was probably um, six years ago. I think it was six years ago. And is that when I met you? Was, right around when I met you? A little, I met you a couple years later. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you were a different catalyst in my life. Um, you were a different person when I first met you, though. Yeah, I was, for, for sure. sure. For sure. So when, um, when I started to get on like the self-development journey and practicing my mind, I, um, I realized that, or I, I realized that I was creating my mind, I was creating my life with my mind, with my thoughts. I, I looked up um, motivational speakers like mm -hmm. Les Brown, and he showed me like how. Anything is possible, no matter what circumstance you're in. And so that really opened me up to new possibilities that I didn't see for myself before, or that I saw for myself, but I just didn't know how to get to. And the other thing I learned was um, I watched the movie The Secret, and that taught me about, or it showed me how the reason why I hate myself is because I keep repeating I hate myself, like in my head. That was the internal mantra that was happening. And I would re reassure, reaffirm that with other stuff, like, oh, like, life sucks. Like, oh, like, I, this is another thing that I messed up. Or like, oh, of course, nothing good is going to happen for me. So this, these are the, the writings on the inside of my, my mind walls. And so I had to, I brought awareness to that. And I also began to flip it. I flipped it into like, oh, like, God, I'm so grateful for my breath. Like, and I took, I remember like I took a really, really deep breath, like as soon as I learned that. And it was life changing, literally, it was life changing. And I would begin to practice, practice the positive mantras like, oh, like, what a beautiful day today. Like something good is going to happen to me. 
or I'm gonna make the most of today, or like the the universe conspires in my favor. Like I, I am blessed and highly favored. Like everything around me is gonna prosper. So these are the completely different thoughts that I was having from before I started being intentional with my mind and my life versus when I was, when I began to be intentional. And then, so that's like what started me on the, on the journey. Well, you did incredible, strong, uh, purposeful work there. There was a big charge that he had because if he didn't do it, he was going the wrong way and he knew it. Like it was like, this is my life. My life is either gonna, gonna go somewhere or it's gonna go down. So there was a lot of uh, motivation for seeking out answers and changing. And that's good, that's good. You know, you listen to how, what, it, what he did, these things, it's like, okay, wow, I don't know if I have enough, you might be like, I'm not, I don't know if I have enough, uh, you know, gumption to do that or make that as a practice. Well, he just got very in touch with, because he had such, like, I have to change because he had, I, I want to say it he, it, it, he took this so seriously because he absolutely had to. And he did it so well and so strongly because of the depths of the emotions were so bad and negative and painful. That's why he took it so seriously. That's what I want to say. We don't want to change our thinking because we're in a pattern and we're like, well, you know, my life is okay the way that it is. It's, we don't want to change until we hit that threshold. And then we're like, I got to find some new answers. I got to change my thinking. And then we do. And then, you know, with, with just shifting these thoughts, like, I hate myself. Nothing that I do works. Those are like a really big deal because you're not going to be able to impact getting the job, meeting somebody new, making a good impression, doing a good job when you're at the job. You can't do any of that with those thoughts in your mind. The depths of negative emotion can bring you totally around the opposite side to creating amazing emotions. If you can feel one, you can feel the other. And the time to do it is when you're at your, is, is well, right now. You know, the time to do it is right now. It, but if you're feeling like, oh, I'm really low, that's fine. That's exactly where he was. So that's now it's go time. You can cr actually have the biggest breakthroughs because you're really low, because you're so in touch with that n negative pain that you have right now. You can create the complete opposite, and, it, and it's going to be freaking amazing. You are so powerful. I mean, th right, that, that contrast there, that is power. It's so powerful. That's why you're, he's able to explain it like this. A cool metaphor that I love that kind of describes this is sorrow carves the well that holds the rain of joy. So the deeper sorrows that you've had and experience, it could feel like it's carving something like inside of you. It could feel like, you know, just like a rusty spoon digging at your heart sometimes. But then there's a hole there that can be filled with something beautiful, which is joy. And now because you've had, you've experienced this darkness, you're able to really appreciate the light and the beauty and the good things that come to you, that are coming to you all the time. Um, so yeah, that's, that's something. This language you have is very good. It's amazing. Thanks, I, I learned that. That's from the book I gave you from the prophet. Oh yeah. And then, um, yeah. Cahill Gibran. Yeah. Anybody know that book? It's yeah. a good book. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, well, we're gonna wrap up this podcast episode. Just want you to know, if you're feeling disappointed, you've just been in a trance of disappointment and the awareness of catching yourself going, oh my God, I'm trying to create this amazing life through the lens of disappointment, feeling disappointed. Um, and uh, that awareness will be like, holy shit, okay, that's what I'm trying to do. That's why it hasn't been working. Then switch to, just start to switch your thinking to like, it's all about growth for me. Everything I'm learning is moving me forward. Um, I'm opening up new areas of myself. This is where all my best life and all the money's gonna come from. All of the friends are gonna come from. A different part of me that I just haven't been paying as much attention to or developing. Mm -hmm. We get in a trance. 
-hmm. You've just been in a trance, that's all. And you will stay in the trance until you wake up and maybe, you know, maybe you woke up a little bit right now. And part of that is being aware of the thoughts in your mind and also introducing new thoughts um, because that's how we have a new life is by if we want to live a new, like better life, then we have to start thinking in a new and better way. And one of the ways to do that is by listening to stuff like this, like what, what we're introducing to you and by going out and like and looking for yourself too, looking up these motivational speakers like Les Brown or like Jim Rohn and, and Tony Robbins or Janet Urban. And it's, it's important, it's powerful because you need to introduce this new kind of language into your mind and make it, you have to cultivate this, this beauty within yourself. Where you watch this episode, you can, if you can leave a comment, tell us where you love to learn, uh, who you've learned from, what philosophies you love to learn from, and let's get some sharing going of who's really made an influence for you. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you guys later. Thanks for listening today. And if you have a moment, could you please leave me a review? I would love that. And make sure you head over to friendsandfilm.com slash join and sign up for my free mini course on what you need to know to find opportunities and start making film and acting work come to you. I'll see you next week.